Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here, and today we're going to talk about the trigonometric ratios of acute triangles. Remember, an acute triangle is a triangle that is uh, has angles less than 90 degrees, so no angle is bigger than 90 degrees. Now, in the past, we've done sine, cosine, and tangent, and we're going to add to those this year. We're going to add cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And so that's what we're going to look at today. It's not going to be that different than what we've done in the past, but there are those three additions that I mentioned. So we'll look at what those do. So just as we've done in the past, we're going to look at a 90 degree triangle. And that 90 degree triangle, uh, if we're taking this as our angle, has three sides that we're going to name. We're going to name the adjacent side, we're going to name the opposite side, we're going to name the hypotenuse. So nothing new there. It is important to note that it must be a 90 degree triangle to apply. Um, for sine or cosine or tangent uh, ratios that we're going to look at. Otherwise, we'd have to use a sine or cosine laws. And so we all know what these are, sine, cosine, and tangent. And we know that so stands for opposite over hypotenuse. We know that cosine stands for adjacent over hypotenuse, the ka part of it. And we know the tangent stands for opposite over adjacent, the OA part of it. And so um, the whole thing was so ka toa, if you need to be reminded of that. So that's what it looks like. So if we want to find an angle or if we want to find a uh, length, knowing an angle and a length, we can find that. So any two things that we know, we can find a third thing. We also have, and this is what's new this year, is the reciprocal ratios. The reciprocal ratios are not found on your calculator. In other words, you have to translate them back to sine, cos, and tangent. But in terms of writing things succinctly, uh, they provide a little bit of uh, help. And so one of them is the cosecant. And so cosecant is CSC theta. And it is represented as 1 over sine. Another way to think about that would be if it's 1 over sine, it's the reciprocal of sine. So that means it would be hypotenuse over the opposite side. The next one is the secant, and that's written as SEC theta, and that's 1 over cosine. And the way to think about that is it's the reciprocal of cosine, so it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And the last one is cotangent, and that's what it's called in its full form, and how you write it is COT theta is 1 over tan, and again, that's the reciprocal of tan, so in that case, it would be the adjacent over the opposite. Now, I want you to think for a second, as you have these in front of you, think about what these ratios uh, will be compared to 1. And if you think about, we always know the hypotenuse is the longest side. So what I mean by comparing it to 1, look at sine. Will sine ever be bigger than 1? Well, the opposite side is never going to be longer than the hypotenuse. So this will always be less than 1. This will be less than, it could be equal to 1, I suppose, if it wouldn't be a triangle at that point. Same with cosine. Cosine will also be less than or equal to 1. And so it's important to note, um, just for our understanding of being able to check our answers, that those are going to be less than 1. However, if we take the reciprocal of that and we have the hypotenuse over the opposite or the hypotenuse over the adjacent, in that case, this would be greater than or equal to 1. Because the hypotenuse, again, is the longest side. Now, you notice I didn't label that for the tan or the cotangent. And the reason for that is because it, my opposite and adjacent can waver. So I don't need to have uh, an opposite that's longer than adjacent. I could also have an adjacent longer than opposite. It doesn't matter. So there's no... Uh, rhyme or reason to saying if it's going to be greater than or less than one. We don't know. It could be either in different scenarios. I want to just note uh, a few examples, but before I do that, I want us just to remember that we won't always have the angle down here. Sometimes we might have a triangle that has an angle up here. And if that's the case, just keep in mind that this becomes your adjacent side. This becomes your opposite side and this becomes your hypotenuse. And so if it's that other angle, the opposite, and, and it, let's suppose it's the same triangle as above, 
then you would find that the ratios are going to change, but they're going to give you that third angle inside that triangle. And so all those uh, values should be the same, though your opposite and adjacent have changed in terms of what you're finding for the ratios. The other uh, thing I want to mention is this, that theta is never the right angle. It's never the 90 degree angle. And keep in mind, this only applies to 90 degree triangles. Otherwise, we have to use the sine and cosine laws, which we'll again look at this year. And again, there will be some slight um, things we'll learn about those laws that we didn't know before. So let's look at some examples and see how this works. So here's our first example. I'm going to draw a triangle, and I'm purposely not going to draw it oriented in a nice way, just so that we have to think about this a little bit. We have, I'm going to label this X, Y, Z. Remember that we always label the, the um, vertices with capitals, and then we would label the sides with uh, small letters. So the side that's opposite the Z vertex is going to be small Z, and that's going to be 15 meters. The side that's opposite the Y vertex is going to be small Y, and that's going to be 12 meters. And then I'm going to label these with... Uh, the Greek letters alpha for that angle, which is like a fish, and then a B with a tail on it, beta, for that angle. So we often use the Greek letters alpha, beta, sometimes we'll use the Greek letter uh, gamma. So I'll just spell these out for you just so you can see them. We're familiar with these words, I'm sure. Gamma is the other one we would use sometimes. Obviously, we use theta sometimes. And then we'll use this Greek letter phi sometimes as well. So those will be the different Greek letters that we use for angles. And one of the reasons we use Greek letters is because uh, the Greeks were famous for their study of angles. If you look at the different structures they built in history, they had an amazing command on angles. And so it's one of the ways we honor them, and it's just been accepted in pop popular culture and, and math and science that we use uh, Greek letters to represent angles. So here's what I want us to do with this particular question. I want us first to determine yz to the nearest tenth of a meter. Determine yz to the nearest tenth of a meter. And the second thing we're going to do after we do that is we're going to determine angle y and angle z. And so we could label it as angle y and angle z, or also obviously alpha and beta we could label those as. So here we go. Let's look at this triangle and see how we're going to do this. Well, clearly if it's a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And so the, the side yz, we're going to label that with a small x. So I can say that x squared is equal to y squared plus z squared. It's a Pythagorean theorem. We've used this for years now at this point in our math career. And so x squared is what we're trying to solve for. We know that y is 12. We know that z is 15. Don't forget to square both of those values. So we get 144 plus 225 is equal to x squared. And so x is the square root of those two numbers added together. When we add those two numbers together, 144 plus 225 gives me 369. And so that's the exact answer. And then we would round that to say, 19.2 meters. So simply using the Pythagorean theorem. It then asked us to determine the angles. So let's go ahead and find the angles here. For alpha, uh, we know the opposite side to alpha. This is the opposite side z. And we know the adjacent side y. So we could say that that is tangent. So tan of alpha is the opposite over the adjacent. And so if you don't have to draw opposite over adjacent, but if you're still struggling to identify it and you easily make mistakes, it's not a bad idea to do so. The opposite side is going to be Z, so that's 15. And the adjacent side is going to be 12. And now to solve for alpha, we need to not divide by tan, we need to take tan inverse. Remember, tan operates on the angle, so to get rid of it, it's not as simple as dividing by tan. 
So we take the tan inverse of that and make sure your calculator is in degrees. If your calculator is in radians or gradients, um, that's a problem. So make sure it's in degrees. That's super important in this unit. And we should find an answer, tan inverse of 15 over 12, making sure we put that in brackets, of 51 degrees. Then beta, it's pretty straightforward from there. You don't need to use a ratio again because beta is found by the sum of the angles being 180. Remember all the interior angles of a triangle add to 180 minus the other two angles inside the triangle. So 180 minus 90 minus 51 gives you an angle of 39 degrees. You could have used, um, you could have used, if you wanted to, again, tan. So you could have used tan beta, but like I said, it's more straightforward once you find one angle just to use the property of triangles adding up to 180. And you're good. You're set from there. So that should be relatively straightforward. That's nothing new to us. What's new to us is the second example that I'll look at now. In the second example, the question says this. Solve the following. All it's going to say is solve the following. So if we're solving for this, and it's going to be cosecant alpha equals 8 over 5. And you remember that cosecant and secant both can be over 1, or they need to be bigger than 1. So this makes perfect sense that this would be bigger than 1 because it's the hypotenuse over the opposite side. If you're struggling to figure that out and remember that, here's a, here's a little trick that I use, and I'll go back to earlier on the note. I remember that sine corresponds with cosecant and that cosine corresponds with secant. In other words, it's opposite what you would expect. So sine, the S corresponds with the C, and the C corresponds with the S. And then tan and cotangent is, is straightforward. So just remember, it corresponds with the opposite. So again, mathematicians just like to naming things uh, to make our lives complicated, right? Not exactly. It's actually, there's some good reason why they're calling it cosecant and secant. Uh, and that's something you learn if you go on in math in uh, advanced functions and in first year university. Nonetheless, sine, cosecant, cosine, cosine, and secant. So we want to solve the following. Cosecant alpha equals 8 over 5. So what we're going to do now is we're going to represent this as 1 over sine alpha. And so we don't have cosecant in our calculator, so we have to put it into this. So there's no cosecant on calculator. So switch it, in this case, to sine. So we get 1 over sine is 8 over 5. And so you could cross multiply this. So you could say, let's cross multiply those values and then divide by 8. Or you could just note that anytime I have a fraction is equal to a fraction, what I'm doing, what I can do is I can just flip this side and flip this side. I take the reciprocal of both sides because we've, we're familiar with enough with this uh, fraction equaling a fraction that we should be able to be comfortable doing that. That gives me sine alpha is 5 over 8. And so from there, you should be able to take it. So it would be a good idea now to solve this yourself and then check your answer when you're done. So here we go. That means that alpha is equal to sine inverse of 5 over 8, making sure we divide that. And that means our alpha is 39 degrees. And that is our answer. That's what it means to solve the following. We're solving for the unknown variable. So that's all I want to go over today, and that should make sense. I know this may be straightforward, and it's a great place to start a unit, um, but it's important you practice this and get very quick with this because it's going to come, we're going to find in many questions that we have to do a number of different steps this way. And so if we're not efficient with it and we're not um, comfortable with it, we're going to start struggling on some things perhaps. So all the best with that. If you have questions, as always, reach out and feel free to ask for help.